Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to the program Islam Explained. Today we have a very interesting topic and it's a very controversial one as well. Science, religion and God. Are they compatible or as some people argue, are they opponents? So Omar, let us get right into it. Is it true that science and religion are opponents? Yes, Faisal. I personally find the argument quite ludicrous. First of all, they are completely different things. Science, religion. Uh, religion is a form of belief. It mainly concerns the metaphysics, spirituality, and what we call the gaib, the unseen. However, uh, when we talk about science, science is only a tool that we human beings use to understand nature. The universe and existence, of course. We explore as human beings, examine and investigate the natural phenomena, and we try to understand how things work. That's what science is. And based on our findings, calculations and data, we establish scientific laws, theories and postulations. And this is what science is. And sometimes we are quite accurate. However, sometimes we are not. Interestingly, these days, I find this quite interesting, these days, we have a new breed of people who have turned science into religion. Wow. It's, it's not a science anymore for them, it's like a religion for them. Because they make claims like, I believe if it's observed, detected, or proven by science. Mm. And most of these people, of course, are not scientists. Because they, if, if, if a true scientist approached the issue in that way, it would not be logical. Because mm. true scientists would say, although we know a lot about nature, but we do not know everything. In reality, we do not know much about the universe and existence. This is what a true scientist would claim. Yeah. There is another fact that our understanding of nature and science has changed and evolved over history, over the history of humankind. What we know today is much different to what we knew, for example, 500 years ago or 300 years ago or even 50 years ago. Yeah. yeah, it is obvious that people who believe that science has the answers to everything mm -hmm. assume that science knows everything or it will eventually know everything about the universe and existence. Mm. So can I ask how much do we really know? I think you made a very important point there, I said. Because what do we know about the universe? Well, how much do we really know? Like for example, scientists believe the universe originated about 13.7 billion years ago, Correct. according to the Big Bang Theory. Yeah? It is about 91 billion light years thick. It's huge across. It has been expanding, according to the theory, since the Big Bang and continues to expand, at least we, we, we think so today. That's right. But what is more important is what we do not know. We don't know much things, many things. For example, how did it come into existence, originate in the first place? How did the universe come into existence in the first, first place? Is the universe infinite or finite? We do not know this really. What exists beyond the observable universe? Is it possible for the universe to come into existence by chance? Is this possible? Can something really pop into existence from non-existence? See, these things we do not really know, do we? So are there um, answers to these questions then? Well, uh, from a theological perspective, we have an answer, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the Islamic theological perspective because creation, that's the really answer. But, a f but from a scientific perspective, we have no answers to these questions, really, except for some arguments that we, we put forward. Let me give you some examples. Sure, go yeah. ahead. From a scientific perspective, how did the universe originate? For example, here's a question. Mm -hmm. Well, not by chance, that's for sure. The universe is too improbable. It's too harmonious. It's too, much, too perfectly ordered. It's in order. Functioning, functioning with certain laws, for example, from the quantum mechanics to all the way to governance of joint galaxies, everything functions with laws in the universe, physical laws. It is like clockwork. There is no sign of chance here. And when we talk about the universe coming into existence from a state of non-existence, we can even consider that chance, chance cannot occur without space-time and matter. Even for a chance to occur, it needs space-time. That's, that's a very interesting argument. Yeah. So, uh, 
we ask again, how did the universe originate and how it formed from a chaotic, from the chaotic Big Bang, reversing entropy to fine tune itself and transform into harmonious state to become hospitable for life. This is very interesting. Wow. So, both from a scientific perspective and an atheistic perspective, this is inexplicable. So, how do atheists explain this? Well, anything to avoid creation, isn't it? That's correct. They'll do anything to avoid creation. So, they have an alternative theory now. They call it the multiverse theory. Science, since scientists know that the universe is improbable, which means when you look at the laws of probability, universe coming into existence, popping out into existence, one-off as the way it is now, it's improbable because it's too perfect. So when you look at the universe, there's order, precision, perfect measurements. As I said, it's not probable. So as Michio Kaku explains, a famous physicist, mm -hmm. current contemporary physicist, mm -hmm. he says, then there could be millions of universes where one of them, by chance, turned out to be perfect for life. And it happened to be, we live in it, we exist oh. in it, for mm -hmm. some reason. So, I ask, you know, if from a scientific perspective, perspective, where is the evidence for this? Where is the scientific data that even implies that this is possible? Quite often, you know, scientists, or atheists, I should say, atheist scientists, I should say, argue that God cannot be proven scientifically. Well, come up with an alternative. Prove how the universe originated. Can you scientifically prove that multiple universes exist? Scientists like, for example, Steven Weinberg, very famous physicist, um, David and Roger Penrose, Paul Davis, and many other renowned scientists, they believe that the multiverse theory is unscientific. That's what they think. Mm. Davis, in fact, Paul Davis, stated in New York Times, and I quote, for a start, how is the existence of other universes to be tested? How can we test them? To be sure, all cosmologists accept that there are some regions of the universe that lie beyond the reach of our telescopes. We cannot observe them. But somewhere on the slippery slope between that, the idea that there are an infinite number of universes, the credibility reaches a limit, he says. Okay. So despite this, some people are ready to accept the argument without any scientific evidence, while they easily reject God because science cannot prove God. You know, it doesn't sound really, you know, logical to me. Yeah. yeah. Why is it so? Why is this so? Why is it easy to accept these kinds of theories without any scientific evidence, but reject God, although there are many indications that point to a creator? Uh, this is what I really believe, because the idea is fantastic. We love science fiction. That's a, yeah. especially in this day and age. We love science fiction, and the idea is multiverse theory, the idea is science fiction. People are fascinated with, for example, this type of, you know, proposals, this type of thesis, hypothesis. Religion is too boring for them. That's the reality. Even if there were a million proof for the existence of God, these people will find one argument to reject God, to reject his existence. They think that science knows everything and has answers to every question. But let me tell you what the reality is here. Sure. We cannot see beyond the observable universe. That's the first reality. Sure. The farthest object that we can see, the galaxies, distant galaxies, is about 13 billion light years away from us. Yep. That's what we can capture. That's right. We do not know if the universe is much bigger than what we see or in fact, much smaller. Hmm. That's interesting. Can we really? Uh, can it really be smaller than what we think? Actually, it may be smaller. Uh, that, that is interesting. If we look at uh, the model of the closed universe, light might circle the universe several times. So when we look at distant galaxies,
we may actually be observing our own galaxy the way it was, for example, two billion years ago, for example. Yeah. So <laughs> what we see may be an ilu ilu illusion about our own universe. Yet we speculate that there may be multiple universes and ask if God exists. And if he does, why can't science prove it? Let me give you a humorous analogy in sure. regards to this. Think about two bacteria mm -hmm. living in the intestines of a human being. Two bacteria. They are having a scientific conversation. <laughs> it's just an analogy. Yeah, sure. And one of the bacteria says, we cannot prove the existence of human being because our science cannot prove it. We cannot, we don't have the evidence, we don't have the data. So he's arguing, it's arguing that the human beings do not exist because their science cannot prove it. Because they can't see it. They can't see it, they can't so detect they it. it. Yeah, they're too small, too tiny. They cannot even see the, the entirety of the intestines, think about it. Yeah. So, do you think that's really humorous in yeah. that way when you think, think about so, it? Yeah. Yeah. How should we approach the multiverse uh, theory? That's the okay. question. Yeah, so that, so that, that would be the question. Yeah, that it? would yeah. be the question. Okay. okay. Well, from my perspective, really, the multiverse theory is not sustainable. No? No. In fact, let me tell you something that may be more plausible than that. But you will find this very interesting. Maybe a bit confusing, but it's very important, I think. Then I believe that there are no multiple universes, but perhaps there are multiple versions of the same universe. That's just your theory at the moment. That's my theory. I'm thinking okay. that. Way. Okay. But I am basing this on something very important. Like, I know it's a bit interesting and sounds funny, a bit confusing, but I am basing this on something. Uh, it sounds very interesting, yeah. but a bit confusing as well. Yeah, it is confusing, but a famous scientist or mathematician came up with this theory about the space-time or the universe. Mm -hmm. And his name is Hermann Minowski. He proposes a model for the universe, actually for space-time. And in his model, we come up with this model, which is the universe resembles an onion. It's a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. As you know, an onion has many layers. Yeah. From the center going outwards. Many, many layers. And when we look at the universe, we can say, when we compare them, we can say that the center of the onion resembles the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And as the universe expands, space-time expands as well. And during the expansion, we have new, year, new layers appearing, new, new slice uh, of space-time appearing, one after another. As we observe the distant galaxies, we are actually observing the space-time, slice of space-time in the past. So this is because from our perspective as human beings, we are in the present. This time for us mm -hmm. is the present we are actually in the most outer layer of space-time, outer layer of the onion. Therefore, if someone really asks us, for example, where are we in the universe as a location, I would say this question would be incorrect, really. Because the right question should be, where and when are we in the universe? Where and when are we? Because you cannot separate space-time. Mm -hmm. So, from this per perspective, now, let us go even beyond the Min Minkowski model, Hermann Minkowski model. Yes, from our perspective, we are within, within the slice of space-time that we exist now. This is the present, from our perspective. But just imagine a being, a being who is not bound by space-time, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and who is not contingent, who is not dependent on anything else. This being is self-subsisting, has a necessary existence. He is the grand artist who created and designed the entire universe. For him, in reality, there is no past, there is no present, or there is no future. Since he has create, created the entire existence concurrently, he observes the multiple versions of the universe, 
as I said in, yeah. a, up in a post to multiverse theory, I said there may be multiple versions of the same universe, like the onion wow. example, space time. Yes, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so since he created Roll, yeah. he observes the multiple versions of the universe and space time at the same time. Wow. So it is past, present, and future are all present to him because he has designed them that way. Mm. So when we're talking about the concept of God, for God, the inner layers, the current layers, and the future layers of space time are all present. It's like there a is, line. Yeah. And so he can yeah. observe it all together at the yeah. same time because he created them at the same time. As we are trapped within our own slice of space-time, he is not. He's not bound by space or time. For him, future is present as well. So for God, we have already died, for example. We have True, already died. The future as well. yeah, yes, so we have already died. And we have already journeyed to wherever we are destined to go. This is actually what the concept, concept of destiny is all about as well. So we can say that God is not bound by space-time. He is the all-knowing. Perhaps one last thing I should say here as well. Go ahead. The reason why atheists you know, reject God because, because they have this uh, picture of God in their minds which is anthropomorphic. They think God is you know, similar to a human being, a huge being, you know, like Zeus or something like something that. Something similar to the clouds. Yeah, something like that. But in reality, you should not imagine God to be like that. You cannot imagine God in reality from an Islamic perspective. His essence we do not know. We only recognize him through his attributes and names. Mm. He cannot be engulfed or encompassed by any eye because he is not matter. He doesn't have shape. He doesn't have direction. Because of this, we do not understand God. And some people reject for this reason. Yeah. We cannot test him with science. That's right. But when we look at this complex universe, we see that it needs a design. There is no doubt about that. Yes. Omar, thank you very much again for uh, addressing this issue um, with your vast knowledge in science as well. Thank um, you for inviting me. Not a problem. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so, and we'll see you next time on the program. See you next time. Take care.